Okay, so in this uh, question, we're going to take a look at how to calculate confidence intervals um, for a certain set of data here. So we are determined the 95% confidence interval to three decimal places for the mean if the standard deviation is 10 and the um, the sample mean is 100 for the vol for the following values of n. So these are our sampling sizes. So the thing we need to remember about our confidence interval is that we have a normally distributed curve. Um, we have our population mean. And when we say 95% confidence interval, what we're looking at is we're looking at to find the boundaries, okay, which is um, the area that is in between those two, two um, points here. So essentially what we're doing is we're excluding the first 2.5% of the, uh, the range and then we're going up to 97.5% um, on the upper end. Okay, so if we look at how we can quickly do this, um, we'll just write down some of our, our current values here and we'll look at doing the calculation for sample A. So the confidence interval that we're looking at, alpha is equal to 5%. Uh, percent. Okay, because it's a 95% confidence interval, that means there's 5% for error, and we split that evenly over two parts. So that means the portions that we're looking at here are 2.5% on either side of the, uh, of the distribution curve, and which means that we need to calculate what our Z scores are for each of those points. So we can easily do the Z score. Um, so we need essentially two Z scores here, Z1 and Z2. Um, and because they're symmetrical around the curve, um, the, the value there is going to be plus or minus each of those Z scores. So we can simply calculate the, the Z score by using the inverse norm function on our scientific calculator. Um, so we're going to do the inverse norm of 0 0.025, and that is going to be equal to negative 1.95996. Um, <clears throat> now we do need to calculate the z-score of the second side. So it is essentially going to be the same value, it's just going to be positive. But if we wanted to actually do that, okay, we would have to take the inverse norm of the 97 point... Um, 5% interval, so that's 0.975, and that will equal to 1.95996. So this is going to give us our two Z scores that we're going to add around each of the sample means to determine the confidence interval. Okay, so in the first one here, we can just say the confidence interval, okay, is going to be given by our formula which is going to be x bar minus the z score of uh, the halfway interval times the standard deviation over the square root of n. So that's going to be one of our lower limits. Okay, and then this, the uh, population mean, is that's the lower limit for one side. And then the other side is going to be just the positive version of that. So that's our, we need to know our z-score sigma over square root n. Okay, so if we are able to find those calculations, all we need to do here is plug in our values, where in this case we're going to use n is equal to 30 for our first one. So our numbers would be 100 minus um, 1.95996. Um, okay, and I'm going to use a large number of decimal spots to make it just so we increase some of our accuracy. Our standard deviation is 10, and our square root is going to be 30. And then we're going to be less than, and then it's just going to be the same calculation on the other side, except we're just going to add um, it to it instead of subtracting it. Okay, and then once we work out our intervals here, we should see our lower bound here for this particular question is 96.422 and it's going to be less than the interval of 103.578. Okay, so that's what we get when n is equal to 30. Um, if we look at it when n is equal to 30,000, so the sample size increases, and it's going to be a, um, 
a much larger sample to work with. The equation is exactly the same, except we just use n is equal to 30,000 in there. And then what you should see when we work up the equation, the values for this is you'll have 99.877 is uh, the lower bound for the mean, and then the upper bound is 100.113. So what that tells us is that as we increase the sample size, as the sample size increases, okay, the confidence interval, the confidence inf interval um, um, decreases. Okay, the actual range of values gets a little bit more accurate because we have a larger sample to work with. All right, so that's one of the, the rules that you want to see from the patterns here. So the first one we did n is 30, and then the last one where d n is equal to 30,000, we see the range get progressively smaller. All right, so that's how you work through that question. Um, I think the key to this is that you just need to make sure that you carry enough decimal places when you are working out the calculation, and it's best to either just chain them all into your calculator um, with as many decimals as you, you can. If you cut off the decimals a little bit too early, um, say to the nearest tenth or the nearest hundredth, you might introduce some errors that move through the calculation. So you want to keep that as, uh, as the numbers as accurate as possible. All right, so that's how that question would work out.